Hi everyone and Hello. welcome back to the second instalment of our In Conversation series. Number two already. Looking at what it means uh, for us to be a community in this post-lockdown world. So today we want to think about uh, church as a family and uh, church can be viewed as all sorts of uh, different things. I think uh, if you look at the government and their response to coronavirus at the moment they see the church very much as part of that but they see it as a third sector charity that uh, works with people in a community. Um, other people might see the church as an institution that is very traditional and very legal and has its ways of doing things um, and almost an unchanging institution. Other people would see the church as a social club. Uh, others might see it as this historic thing that is about oppression. Um, but for, for Jess and I, that we, as we mentioned last week, one of the really important features of a church for us is that church is family. Uh, so why is church's family important for you, Jess? I think I mentioned last week um, that there have been people in my life uh, who wouldn't be there had it not been for the church. Uh, and we probably view them now as members of our extended uh, family. So um, I can think of occasions growing up where there'd be um, copious numbers of people in our house for church meetings and other things. Um, but we'd equally find them there on Christmas Day because they had um, nowhere else to go or nobody else to celebrate it with. Uh, or we'd go on holiday with them or uh, all sorts of different things like that. And they became viewed almost as honorary aunties and uncles and grandparents. And I've kind of, my, my nuclear family, if you like, has extended um, because of the church. Uh, and there have been people who I wouldn't be who I am today without um, and who I'm really thankful for, for ha having seen things in me, uh, for encouraging me and um, quietly nurturing me uh, in the faith as I grew up. Um, and so that's why it's really important for me. So in, in leading a church, in building a community, you're in, a, you're in three new churches, one parish. And um, how do you, what are the kind of the marks of being a church that is about being family? What are some of the key things that you think you'll need to develop or you'll be looking for in your church communities? Um, I think spending life uh, with each other, not just on Sunday mornings, um, okay. but throughout the week as well. So what do you mean by that? Um, you know, social stuff is really important, um, but actually just um, spending time with people, getting to know them, um, allowing them to be who they are, um, being there in both the good times and the bad. I think that's really important because so often we can reduce church to an hour, hour and a half on a Sunday. I remember we did a mission back in Wallasey and um, we had a, a preacher come uh, on a Sunday and uh, he, was, he was wanting to know what the service was going to look like and how it was going to run and all of this. And I remember saying to him, well, it doesn't really need to be completely planned to the minute because I'm not a believer in one hour sermons like um, certain Methodist preachers of mine. And he goes, I'm a Methodist preacher and I see nothing wrong with making sure you're in and out within an hour. Um, and sometimes we can just reduce church to one hour that we don't actually get to know other people. Mm. We don't therefore get encouraged by other people and we don't get to encourage others as well. Um, and so this whole idea of relationship just gets thrown out the window because you come to do something and then you go. And I think we miss out so much if we do that and if we reduce church to something we just do on a Sunday. Um, yeah, and I think I've been part of churches where I've known people for where they've sat or I've known them hmm. by sight, but I couldn't tell you what their name was, let alone anything else about them. Um, and I think we kind of have this culture, don't we, that we go into church or, or we did before um, lockdown and you'd kind of ask somebody how they were and they'd go, yeah, I'm fine. And then they'd walk out of the building and often we'd discover kind of weeks, months later that something really big was going on in their life but that we have this sort of perception that we have to be fine, we have to be good uh, in order to be part of the church and that we can't somehow bring our true selves uh, to other people, let alone to God. For me, that's one of the really important things about 
I'm viewing church as a family. It gives everyone permission to be real and to be honest. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm, I'm kind of on the word authentic at the moment. I really like that word at the moment. It gives us all permission to be authentic because if you're a family, everyone's equal and everyone accepts that we're all human and we all make mistakes. Mm-hmm. And if we're a family, we love each other no matter what mistakes we make. We forgive each other no matter what goes wrong. We support each other and we're there for each other. Um, I've had a couple of emails this week of people whose lives just seem to be jumping from one bad thing to the next bad thing. And I emailed them at, I think, something like half past 11 last night. And it was quickly responded. It was, I got another email quickly after I'd sent it um, saying, Callum, go to bed. <laughs> and that was a church warden. I don't know how they knew I was on my emails still. But I just said to this person, uh, remember Wonderland, what a good time we had. I wish I could just come and give you a hug and laugh with you. Um, and that's one of the really difficult things about the restrictions at the moment. And we can't just hug each other and pat and kind of support each other in those difficult well, We times. can't even spend time with each other, can we? No. You know, church has almost gone back to being that thing that you show up for, you receive and then you go home. Um, and, and I think that's one of the things we're really struggling with about the new yeah. normal. And it, that, that's not what Jesus intended for his church. When he's talking about his church, he uses the relationship of bride and bridegroom. Mm. Uh, we've got one wedding at St. Michael's this year. Have you got any in Stockport? I don't think so. Um, and that is probably the most intimate relationship you can come up with, um, a bride and a bridegroom. The, the intimacy, the, the, the planning that has gone into that relationship, the future of that relationship. Um, and that's what Jesus says the relationship between his church and him is. But surely that then gives us some idea of if that's a relationship Jesus calls us into with him, the relationship we have with each other must be fairly similar. Yeah, and he talks about, doesn't he, um, in a rather brash way, he kind of gets rid of um, his mother and the disciples when they want to talk to him when he's really busy and he says um, you know you're not my mother you're not my brothers um, but the people who do the will of God are my mother and my father my brothers and sisters Um, and so there's something about church's family in that as well isn't there that actually the thing that unites us is our faith in God yeah and our desire to see that faith grow and be shared uh, with other people yeah Definitely. Keep going. I'm just looking for a particular verse. Just, I want to come back to something you said actually about the fact that we um, share life with each other in all its fullness, um, you know, the good and the bad, and that we're authentic, that we're honest, that we're real with people. And I think um, that's something of our hope of this series actually, that we would share something of our lives with you and that you wouldn't just see us as these kind of leaders that stand at the front of church distant and removed um, from you but that we are um, the same as you in many ways that we are at the heart of um, what the church is really all about and that we want to share something of our life with you and we hope that we can be uh, as real and as honest um, with you as possible I know there have been times when um, we have done that um, in quite a vulnerable way over the last couple of years particularly and people have been really appreciative Mm. of that and they've really kind of gone on a journey with us as we've gone on a journey with them I think yeah um, as we said last week we're, we're living in a brand new world uh, and the world is just going to keep changing and the church is just going to keep changing and my prayer and my hope is actually that we really get this whole idea of being family mm-hmm. which is about loving each other which is about being kind with each other which is about um, not being nice but being kind uh, that we challenge each other's behavior where we're getting it wrong Uh, And in doing that, we support each other in our faith day in, day out. Um, And we become better beacons of Jesus. Um, Over the last few days, I keep going back to um, a conversation we had with my dad uh, probably about two years ago. They just had an extension on their house down in um, the South Downs National Park and uh, they'd had some neighbours, some some people walking by had knocked on the door to say, we see you're having an extension, could we come and have a look? Because we're thinking of doing something similar. And I remember turning around and going, oh, and you told them, no, go away, it's our house. And he said, well, actually, we invited them in and showed them round. Surely that's what you're meant to be doing as a Christian. <laughs> uh, and I just kind of felt so embarrassed at that point that 
he was showing better hospitality than I was, even though I was joking with him. And I think as family, we, we can hold each other accountable, knowing that we're not judging each other, knowing that we're not looking to try and get one up on each other, um, but we're doing it all for the sake of the kingdom of God. So in church as family, how do you deal with conflict? Well, my new vicar would tell you that um, there is no room for conflict uh, in the church. Okay. Uh, and so you have to face everything head on and that you just have to kind of speak it out and, and work it out together until you come to some sort of, you know, mutual agreement. Almost. I suppose you can only do that if you have that mutual respect and love for each other. Yeah, and I think there's got to be an element of trust in that, hasn't there? That you've got to trust the person that you're um, engaging with on that particular matter and as you say you've got to respect them and you've got to treat them as a child of God ultimately I think um, you know we're all on a level playing mm. field here no one is greater than the other you know Jesus himself um, with his disciples asking who is the greatest says it is not so amongst you you know yeah. we're called to be servants of Christ and of one another um, and so I think we've got to start with that really that we're all on a level playing field and that we um, see in that other person what God sees in yeah, them. yeah yeah definitely I think with that comes the element of trusting each other to take risks yeah. so um, you hear a lot and I, I guess the current Archbishop has been criticized a little bit for this of uh, churches becoming like businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen a few quotes on, on Twitter of bishops getting really angry about this. Um, and, uh, and fundamentally, churches are not businesses, but in some cases we do have to run sort of business models to make sure that we, we're staying afloat. But ultimately, if it comes down to taking a risk, that risk shouldn't be based on necessarily business models, but it should be based upon um, trusting one another yeah. and trusting God. Um, and trusting that if it goes wrong we can fall back on God we can fall back on each other just as if we make a decision in fa family life so when a family chooses to have a child they take a massive risk when two families choose to join together in marriage that's a big risk hopefully they spent time thinking it through and planning it through but it's all risk based on love mm. and that's how the church should be operating risking in love and um, I don't know if you're uh, allowed to share this yet um, so if you're not, just say no, and we'll, we'll leave that in the video. But um, you're redeveloping a cafe at Stockport, aren't yep. you? Um, are you allowed to share how you're doing the whole payments thing? Yeah, I think so. Um, so uh, we've had a cafe at St Mary's uh, for the last few years, I think. I don't really know all that much about its history. Um, but it was uh, closed prior to the pandemic, um, and there was plans to relaunch it. And we had a meeting yesterday. Uh, to talk about how we might do that and and one of the things we wanted to do was say this isn't actually about profit and gain this is about the ministry and mission of God in Stockport and so um, we almost want to be a place where people can come regardless of income um, regardless of finances and enjoy good quality food and drink um, and fellowship with other people who they might meet there um, and not have to worry about paying for it so um, we're going to do a suggested donation uh, system for all the things that we serve but equally um, I think I wrote on on some publicity yesterday but if you can't pay this one's on us you know and there's something really um, important about that from a Christian point of view I think that you know throughout the Bible we see people offering generous hospitality time and time again and I think the Bible verse that I've actually put on one of our um, posters is from Hebrews when it says um, to offer hospitality to people because in doing so you may have entertained angels without even realizing it and I think there's something really important about that that's at the heart of what we're what we're trying to do yeah I suppose um, you think about family and the greatest family event um, Christmas has got to be up there yeah. you all gather together social distancing uh, out the way hopefully um, you get the emergency chairs out uh, and you sit around and you have a massive feast that's one of the high points in family life or one of the low points if you don't like your family <laughs> um, and I mean I've only really started attending on uh, midnight and Christmas day at church since I kind of got employed by the church um, and there is something truly genuine and beautiful and honest about the family of God coming together at those high points in the year let alone the rest of the times yeah. 
um, because you feel a sense of unity not just with your Christian brothers and sisters but with the church throughout the world and throughout time and I suppose that touches I've touched a terminology that we may have not touched on yet and um, the Bible actually calls us into a relationship with one another because Jesus calls us into relationship with one another in in the in the Garden of Gethsemane, I think it is, Jesus, um, in John, when he's praying for the final time, um, not necessarily in the Garden of Gethsemane, it's, but it's his final prayers in John, he, he says, I no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. Mm. And he goes on to develop that into brothers and sisters because um, we're doing Ephesian sermon series in, in the 6.30 service. And uh, we are adopted, if you choose to believe and follow in Jesus, through the power of the cross and through the power of resurrection we're adopted as brothers and sisters and so this whole idea of family actually isn't just something nice that we believe in it's it's scriptural and it's biblical and it's a commandment of jesus that we are family we're united together through the adoption of god mm. he adopts us into his family um, and we launched it a few years ago one of our strap lines is come as you are because families don't choose, okay, maybe at weddings they used to, but they don't choose who is part of the family and who isn't. Either you're related or you're not. Mm. And if you choose Jesus, you are related there, thereby. And, and for those that haven't chosen Jesus, I still believe God is calling them and so they are part of our family and they come as they are, not how we want them to be. Yeah. And that's a really important family quality, I think. Yeah, and I think, you know church is or should be a place where people come as they are and shouldn't feel any pressure to conform uh, or to change uh, or to be something that they're not um, I think that was a real learning lesson for me in my late teens when I was at university you know a real kind of journey of self-discovery really of actually this is who God has made me to be so why be any different you know why be somebody else Definitely. and that we should be feel free and able to come as we are warts and all yeah um, into the church into um, the house of God into the family of God um, just as we are because that's who God has made us to be you know life would be boring if we were all the same wouldn't it yeah definitely so church is family that's kind of why we talk about it so much it's why we love all our church families um, and I personally am looking forward to getting to meet more of my Stockport church family although I won't be there as often as Jess has been over here at Bramall um, but I do hope to get to know them a bit more and um, maybe one day we'll be able to have everyone over into the vicarage um, here in Bramall um, for strawberries and cream as we did last year that'd be a um, good day, that, wouldn't it that social side of church is really important um, where we actually spend time investing in each other getting to know each other and sharing the love of Christ with each other outside the more formal setting of worship and um, I learned so much through that family nature of doing Wonderland Festival together uh, Narnia Festival together because we ate together we prayed together it felt like actually sometimes we were falling asleep together um, we worked hard together and there was just such a family element of that i saw people hugging each other when we were allowed that i never thought i'd see hugging each other because we were working together through the power of christ and um, to build his kingdom yeah and i don't know about you but i'd just be really interested to hear from people as to how they think we might be able to do this yeah. given the current restrictions because actually Definitely. it's something i'm really missing um and I hate the fact that, you know, we literally turn up, perform a service and go home again. Um, I'm finding that particularly hard, kind of showing up in a new place and people not really knowing who I am and me not really knowing who they are. So if you have any ideas at all about what this kind of hospitality and church's family might look like, um, given the current restrictions, I'd love to hear it. Yeah, so would I. So uh, do drop us a, a message on Facebook or drop us an email. We'd love to hear it. So um, that's some ramblings about uh, church as family. Can you remember what we're going to talk about next week? I think we're just going to talk about the church. The church. OK, well, that should be um, broad and interesting. <laughs> so who, let's see where it takes us. Um, yeah, we might narrow it down slightly over the coming week. But yeah, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this episode two and um, look out for episode three next week see you soon Bye. <laughs>